Ready, roll. Pretty much. All right. <sighs> All right. Hello, guys. So this is Bandwagon. We got Real Talk, um, and we're going to do introductions. So my name is Julius Kurikowski. My name is Douglas Primo. And today we're here with... My name is David Harrell. What was that? David Harrell. Dave Harrell. You nervous, Dave? <laughs> it's the first time I'm doing this, but, you know, well, got to make the most up. out of it. You're mic'd up. Yeah. First time? Yeah. Pretty excited for it. Hmm. All right, so let's get into it. So can you tell us a little bit about who you are? Um, I am currently a junior. Um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I currently live in Harlem, though. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, whenever I got to go, I got to make that commute. Um, you know, I'm pretty, a, I'm a pretty simple guy when it comes to stuff like that. Not a big party or anything like that. <laughs> um, I come from a, a family, I am the youngest of five children. Oh, wow. Um, what's yeah. that like? When you're younger, it's, uh, it's, you have the privileges, you know, <laughs> being the youngest child. Um, I can relate to that. I'm yeah. the youngest dude. Hey. Yeah. Young <laughs> <power>. <laughs> um, so you, you usually get the, you usually are the quote unquote favorite. Um, so I was around my mom a lot growing up. Um, but the older I got, the more I got to appreciate who my dad really was. My dad was a pastor, um, so I grew up in the church. Okay, what was you know, his name? Uh, I'm going to say his entire title, um, Apostle Dr. William Richard Harrell. He's a doctor. Yeah. That's an Dude, insane. That's he, got, he, had his doc, he got his doctorate in, um, I think, uh, apostolic studies or something like that. My mom has a doctorate, too. She's also an evangelist. Um, my brother is a elder. Also an assistant pastor. Um, my sister is a elder de designate, as well as my brother. And I have another brother in the currently in the Marine Corps right now. So oh, wow. dedicated family, that very studious. A, that is yeah. a that is a stellar family I right there. Five. I got I have one sibling. I got one sister. She bugs me like crazy. I can't. Mm, I can't do five. Sometimes um, I know being an Alfred it allows you to get away from it. You know, it allows you to get away from the family and how much. Because when you have so many people, so many people in your family doing all the all these big things, you know sometimes it's, you find it hard to just fall into your one thing. So I know coming to college for me was an easier way to just fall into my one thing, which was football. Oh, okay. Tell us more about that. Yeah. Um, honestly, when I first like I didn't grow up loving football. Like I wasn't exposed to football growing up. You know, I grew up in church all the time. My dad wasn't a big, huge football fan. Neither was my mom. Um, so because of that. My, one of my brothers, who was a twin, actually, he started playing football before all, any of us. And just one random day, my mom was like, hey, the rest of y'all, y'all going to play football too. And when I first started, like, I didn't, it felt more like a chore, you know, just something to do at the time. I did that from maybe third to maybe fourth grade. Okay, so you didn't start off, like, early, early, you know, no? just, you know, a little bit younger, but still. Um. And after that, you know, at that time, uh, the organization called the Brooklyn Knights, they were charging like 300 almost $400 a person, a kid. Just to play ball? Just to play football. Dang, so eventually crazy. it became too much money. That's a, that's a bit of a racket, I feel like. Yeah. Not like, I hate especially, to put that word on it, but. Especially putting four, four boys through a uh, football program, that, it, the price tag adds up, I can say you that. Know, yeah. Because I'm here from Western New York, right? And we've had like little tykes, right? Same kind of deal, kids playing football. And it's free to play, like. It's not like they give you equipment, they give you the mm -hmm. pads. Like, I can't believe, like, that's kind of shocking to me. I look at it now, and it's like so many programs have the money to just pay for these equipment. And the fact that we just didn't charge that much was crazy. But eventually, like, my mom couldn't pay for it anymore. So we had to stop playing football. I didn't start playing football again until I got into high school. You know, I actually missed my freshman year camp, and I ended up missing the first game as well. I ended up, didn't play till the second game of that season, but because of the, the gap between elementary school and high school, I began to find a love for football. You know, the time away from it allowed me to appreciate the game for what it was. That's when I started getting more into it. So that's when I finally f created my favorite team. You know, I became a Giants fan. Um, yeah. It's been a tough couple years since the Super Bowl. But, um, Listen, when Eli was in there rocking, you know, once he saw Tom Brady, that's, no that's, problem. That's a team I fell in that, love with. That was a team I fell in love with. I and, mean, you also had Michael Strahan on that team. Uh, I think I was JPP, Justin Tuck. You know, they were cooking. <laughs> and because of that, like I was able to embrace the athletic side of me and I was able to get more into it. And getting to high school, it became like the only thing I was really worried about. You know, it was something that really helped me kind of discover more of who I am. I became working out more. 
Well, oh. I mean, a lot of people say that, like, football reveals character because it's a grind. I mean, it's a lot like wrestling in some ways, but, you know, sometimes you got to take hits. There's ankle injuries. Like, like I'm also a football player on the team here, so I'm a little bit biased. I know Dave. <laughs> you know, he's my boy. But, you know, it, it's a lot of work. There's a lot of injuries that happen, like, all the time. But what I call it is, um, I call it controlled chaos because it's something that you choose to do. You know, you're in school a lot. I know a lot of students don't love school, you know, but it's something that you have to do. Um, I'm still getting better at that, trying to become a better student and everything, even in my junior year. But football is something that's controlled. Like, you get to choose how you, how you go through these type of channels and these issues and everything. And honestly, it brings a peace to it because you're like, this is something I'm choosing to do. I know I can work through these issues. It's not like that when you get to the real world. You know, in the mm -hmm. real world, you don't have that escape all the time. Yeah. You know, it's usually just your nine to five or your dedicated work job, and it's all you got. So this has football has really proven to be an escape for me. So that's good to know, man. Good to know. How about you, Doug? Um, as a recent football fan, <laughs> I just started. I I became a Bills fan maybe probably twenty twenty one. So I mean, looking at the game, it, it looks extremely fun to play. I, I give you guys kudos for even trying to play that because I realize there's a lot of strategy and like uh, other stuff that goes into like you know every single play and there's a lot of physical fitness. And I think out of like all the sports you have to have like I, I think maybe football is probably one of the most uh, athletic sports that you can play. You, I mean people are you know you got to be secret. Some people have to be like 300 pounds and you know still be able to run and stuff like that. So it's it's impressive the uh, the athleticism that you guys uh, show out in the field there. I mean I think it's just part of being an athlete in college. You know like I know s the swim team here they work really hard. Some of those girls like I could not do what those girls do here <laughs> at all. Like I can't like listen in the pool I sink. Like, <laughs> I can't go like, the way they do it. Like, mm -mm. Yeah and like you even look at basketball, you know. And the way that they condition is not dissimilar to us, you know. And I think every sport has that one thing that another sport can look at and say, hey, I probably can't do that. Yeah. You know, I know definitely with soccer, soccer is kind of similar to football in terms of how many people are on the field. Like there's so many people on the playing field, but they're consistently running. They don't get timeouts. They don't get, they don't get the type of breaks that we have. They yeah, don't get different speci uh, specificities. That is the word. <laughs> Specifications. Yeah, uh, there's there different go. little things that make each sport unique and makes e each athlete unique. So, yeah. yeah, I was a soccer player for a little bit. Didn't get too much time on the actual field. I was a bench player. <laughs> I, there's nothing wrong with the bench, man. You yeah, no. You need a deep bench, bro. Yeah. We all see in the pros. Mm -hmm. yeah. Best so, teams are the ones that are like deep, good like backups. So. Some some of these scout players, like even in the pro leagues, like they make a team what's great. You know, if you're a scout team player, be the best you can be because. Your one scout rep that maybe you decide to take off could be the, the difference between a team being a championship team and a team being a losing team. So, Well, Tom Brady talks about that, too. He's like, you never know when your opportunity is going to come, but you might only get one yeah, at yeah, that high no, of a true. level. So, you know, you got to make the best of the opportunities at hand. Yeah. Cool. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about the city and what's mm. that like, you know, growing yeah. up there. Because, like, I'm from western New York. Like, I live an hour away from here at Olean. I've never been to the city. I don't know a lot about it, and, you know, I'm kind of curious. Um, growing up in the city, you, like, my dad was originally from the South. So anytime we would go down South, it would be like a culture shock because there's, like, nothing going on. You know, and the South is very similar to up, up in Alfred. So being in the city for as long as I had, I didn't really know anything else outside of the city, like taking the train, you know, going to public schools and everything all that stuff, having delis all over the place. Those were the things that, you know, really made me just, like, appreciate what I had because, like, I would go down south and there wouldn't be any of that. You know, there wouldn't have, I wouldn't be able to just go to a deli. I can't just walk to the corner store. Yeah, there's less, like, the spacing's different, right? Because there's so many people in New York City. There's a lot of things, that, like, a lot of businesses on top of each other. So, like, there's a little bit of ease of convenience there in terms of getting to what you need to get to. But, like, like here you got to drive. When I was when I was um when I was younger, we moved. I think my parents, even before I was born, they lived in every borough. You know, they especially when I was born, we was living in Staten Island. You know, sometimes we lived in Brooklyn. We eventually moved to Harlem, but I still went to school in Brooklyn. So that was an every day waking up, five thirty. You know, to get get on the train by at least six thirty, 
to be to school by eight. And it was an hour and a half ride on the train, you know, so, every single day. So there's no bus. Day. Like, here we have buses. <laughs> um, buses are a lot trickier in the city because of the fact that, you know, they the train stops at, like, larger stations. The mm -hmm. bus is stopping at, you know, specific streets. And do there's you, traffic, too. And there's traffic. Do you have to pay for the buses, too? Yeah. Or is it, so, it's, yeah. It's, so it's the MTA, and it's all the same price. They've been raising it since... God knows when it's like two ninety now. Yeah, it used to be two seventy five. Yeah, but you also have to pay for subway transportation too. Yeah. Yeah, so it's all the same thing. Yeah, it's all the same thing. So, so there yeah. literally no difference other than. Yeah. So I guess how do you feel about that? Like you know, like you were talking about raising prices in the city. Like, have prices gone up to live there since you were a kid? <laughs> since I've been in college, the past three years, I've seen prices go up so much. Like I remember my freshman year in high school, a big I can get a bacon egg and cheese for two twenty five. You know, at the store. By I by the time I graduated, that was. They were pushing five bucks some places. Oh darn! You know, so and I love bacon nugget cheeses. I'll pay almost any price for a bacon nugget cheese. But at some point, you got to be like, yo, this this is a little much. Even some like I have a big sweet tooth. I love snacks. You know, so even looking at snacks going up so much is like that's one thing I appreciated for coming out here is you get to slow down a bit. You know, you get to just buy groceries. You know, just have what you have. Everything's not like you have to get something right now and then. So. But even here, like, listen, I'm a big Pop Tart guy. It's five dollars for a box it's, of Pop Tarts. It's crazy. Like, what that are we doing? Crazy. It's crazy. Like, how is that? Like, I mean, I get that. It's a novelty item. It's made a special way. It's not like eggs, where that's a little cheaper. Like, novelty. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Come on, Pop Tarts are a novelty, bro. <laughs> not every place in the world has Pop Tarts. But I think they have other stuff that's similar to Pop Tarts, though. <laughs> Maybe Pop Tarts, like, Pop Tarts are the type of thing that like you grow up on. And like you don't want to substitute for it. Yeah. You don't yeah, want the name right. brand Pop Tarts. Like, Dude, they don't taste the same. They you don't. Like there was a point where my mom tried to get me to try this different type mm -mm. of Pop Tart brand, and it, it, it was it was gross. No That's great. How they get you. No That's, great value for you guys. No that. great value. Oh, <laughs> God, it's got to be Pop Tarts on that. That's yeah. how they get you. They they'll make you be loyal to a brand and then just start raising the prices. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. But with the city, like that's one thing that you know. As much as I love the city, and every now and then I do have to go back to the city just to kind of get away from how quiet it is up here. Um, every now and then you do get reminded that, yo, the city costs money. You know, when you're younger, you don't realize that because you have your parents. You know, you have your older siblings that might buy you something. But the older you get, when you start having your own money, you realize how expensive some of this stuff is. Yeah, or even when you get out on your own, like just as college students, when you have to pay for your groceries... <laughs> Listen, man, like, that's expensive. You're dropping, like, I'm dropping, like, 70 to to $100 on some stuff. Every time. Things. Yeah. Every, Every time. time. Every time I go to Walmart, I, I go to the checkout, and I'm like, what, $50? I only got a few things. It's like crazy. Like a, a cloud of dust. Like I went to the, the um, Wegmans the other day. It spent $40, and it felt like nothing. You know, it felt like I was, I got nothing. <laughs> but 40 bucks out the window, and then I had to go to Walmart, another 20 bucks out the window. So. Good to know. So, if I went to the city right now, what would be... A destination what would be something you would suggest uh i would suggest stay out of the actual city <laughs> stay out of manhattan stay out, <laughs> stay out of manhattan. Stay out? <laughs> um stay out of manhattan you do not want to get caught up in the, the the people traffic i would say because those streets are busy if you're going to go anywhere go to brooklyn brooklyn's a lot more calm go to brooklyn go to downtown brooklyn downtown you know where the brooklyn. barclay center is okay okay where um, the nets are where the nets are yeah go there you know hit up some of the stores around there um i mean you can go to the go to the go to manhattan you know, you're just going to be surrounded by tourists and people who are angry. Like, you don't want to. Really? You don't want to walk slow in the city. You really don't. That's because re people got to go to like where they're going, right? Yeah. Have you ever been like nudged into? Has oh, anyone ever God. like just push you aside almost? I know. Trying to go to the movies in the city, like Forty Second Street, it's like I don't know how to explain. It's like a stampede. You know, you you get caught up at the wrong time. You you might not be able to move for a couple minutes. <laughs> That's how packed it is, especially at night. That's Times crazy. Square. Yeah. <sighs> All right, all right, Doug. Any questions? What you uh, got? yeah. Um, is it like, is it how different is it coming from such a large crowd and going down to such a small crowd? Because I'm I'm from uh, upstate New York and I'm from you know little town, so I don't like big crowds. I hate big crowds to be honest. So how do you, what do you what what is that like comparison or like difference like? Um, for me, you know, like I said earlier, I'm type of homebody mm -hmm. so i don't like like extremely large crowds either yeah um so coming up here being able to be in my own space helped a lot but sometimes you know it does feel a little too quiet you know the fact that i don't hear you know sirens going off sometimes gets to you yeah. um sometimes you walk outside and it's like actually dark outside mm -hmm. you know we're in the city there's always lights everywhere 
know, there's always lights going on, um, especially in the city. You know, lights everywhere. And you really won't walk to any part of the city that's really dark, yeah. you know. So that that was the biggest thing is just getting used to not having so much going on. Yeah. So, yeah. That was going to be my next question was that uh, how is it, because uh, the city, I've lived in a city. I say that. It's not a city. <laughs> uh, and it, it, they can be pretty loud. And so what was it coming, what was it like coming, but you kind of answered that. Uh, what do you, it, have you uh, looked up at the stars? Have you seen stars in the city? <laughs> in the city, no. <laughs> that um, light pollution. Yeah, that yeah, light pollution. The, the, those, that light pollution is crazy. But I, like I said, I go down south to, you know, to see my grandmother oh, yeah. and you can see the stars very mm -hmm. clearly. Uh, do you mind if I ask where? Like, where in the south? Um, North Carolina, Hereford. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, I love Obiac, dude. The Outer Banks, that's a must-see sometime. You know, and going down there, like, especially since I've been in college, it's been very peaceful because it is a little quieter. Um, like I said, not having a car is probably, like, the worst thing to someone from the city coming up here because you have to drive everywhere. You know, in the city... For me, I never got my license because of the fact that I didn't need to in the city because you can always just hop on the train. You can always just get on the bus if you need to. Heck, you can even just take a cab somewhere. I think that's really different from other parts of New York, too, because, listen, like in other parts, like there are, there's the bus, but you need a car. Mm -hmm. Like you have to be able to go long distances like to get to My stuff. cousins down south, they were, getting car they were getting their license at like 15, 16. Yeah. You know, like fully licensed. Like their parent, my, my uncles are buying them cars. At that point, you really can't do that in the city unless you're like rolling in cash, you know, so. That's like exactly how it is from where I'm from. You have to have a car or like some sort of transportation, either your parents or something like that. You can't go anywhere. Exactly. Imagine trying to park it. Like I was like. like oh, parking in the city like, is, is horrendous. No. I'd hate to drive in the city. That would just give me a whole bunch of just, <laughs> I'd just be I, nervous. <laughs> as much as I want to get my license, I know if I, when I eventually do. And I got to go back to the city. It's just going to be brutal trying to find a parking spot. A lot of people suggest not driving through the city either. That's why so many much. people don't get their license so quickly. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's a lot. I wouldn't want that stress. Like, I I'm yeah. I get stressed out going down the road with regular drivers. <laughs> like, I guess here. So, like, I couldn't imagine, like, packed in streets, four mm -hmm. way, like, four lanes. No the the road rage in the city is just unreal. You know, everyone's angry. Everyone's honking their horn. Everyone's trying to cut someone off, overtake someone, so it's it's chaos at times. Busy. Mm -hmm. That's probably kind of the allure of it, though. It's like things are going on, things are happening. Like the city that never sleeps. That never, yeah. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Never heard that term. I mean, I have, but like <laughs> off the top of my head, I wonder about it. That's that's <laughs> that's what they call a city. Yeah. You know, the city that never sleeps. Lights are always on. Cars are always driving. It's very rare you'll find an empty street. You know, especially in the city. So like trying to sleep there do you ever find it like distracting like is it ever too much sometimes you know sometimes you may hear you know people playing loud music at two o'clock in the morning you know and especially in some of these like more rural towns uh, the rural neighborhoods in, in the city like you're going to find people up 2 a.m blasting music on speakers driving down the driving down the street blasting music driving fast yelling um but that all depends on where you live. You know, that's kind of the give and take of it is because you're in the city, so there are so many job opportunities. Sometimes you just got to, you got to live with that. Yeah, it's all about the area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. What else? So next we got, how do you like Alfred? You've been here for a couple years, right? You said you were a third year junior? Mm -hmm. junior. Yep. Um, what's your major? Uh, sport management, actually. Ooh, Ooh okay. What's that like? Um, honestly, what I can say is, I'm not the best student, but this I definitely know that sport management isn't the hardest major. You know, it's you know you look at something like nursing or I know some of these tech management uh, majors are extremely difficult. Like some of the coding ones, I've yes. heard, like because it's like you got to sit at the desk and just focus on the screen. You know, sport management definitely something that takes your doesn't consume your entire day, um, but it's also something that will like I've noticed that will give you so many opportunities to make it into the field. You know, so many opportunities, so many internships. You know. Um, I know we had a partnership with the Bills, and that's, that allowed us to work with the Bills, get our name out there. We worked with in the ticket sales. I mean, the ticket, the tickets at the gate. You know, we was able to be with guest services, working in the stadium around the 300 level. I know some people who even worked in the suites. Dude, that's an experience because, listen, I've gone mm -hmm. to a Bills game before, been up in the nosebleeds. Like, it's very different the closer you get. Mm -hmm. um, I know that... Um 
I'm trying to think of what I was going to try to say. Uh, I don't think you should, like, look at other majors compared to yours because I have a bunch of buddies who are studying to be, like, uh, physicists and stuff like that. And I look at their stuff and they're like, oh, I have so-and-so exams and stuff like that. And I look at it and I was like, I just have a painting due, <laughs> like, yeah. next Monday or something. And, like, and then I'm it. Then that's it. So I don't think it's fair to judge your major off, off of other ones. Just, uh... What I, what I what I do learn is that it's a it's it's good to appreciate how much work others put in, mm-hmm. you know. Not to, you know, you really don't want to diminish your major because some people do work really hard, you yeah. know, in in every major. Um, but at the same time, there are majors who they keep you up all night. Mm-hmm. You know, they will keep you up all night. And there are some majors who, you know, maybe you might be able to get things done in one day. You know, <coughs> business. <laughs> but now what you guys have to do is like sports management majors. Like I've seen what you guys have to do a little bit. Like you guys have to go to a lot of the events at here at Alfred. Like that's mandatory in the class. And like you said, the groundwork is so much. You have to know almost the basics of, basics of everything. Like I had to take accounting classes. You know, I had to take lit classes. I had to take, you know, the gen eds. The gen. Yeah. Even yeah, I had to take econ. You know, I had to take um, management classes. Like getting that groundwork. Is so crucial to becoming a better sport management because sport management can expand so wide. You can go into coaching. You can go into just a regular management position. Well, I mean, if you think about it, like, like okay, say I own a basketball team, right? You got people who maintain the court, the janitors, the, the people who sell food, the vendors. Mm-hmm. Then you have the media advertisers, the ad revenue. Like, what do you call it? We just saw the Super Bowl a couple weeks ago. Like the ad revenue on that is like ginormous. The yeah. marketing of it all, like it expands so far. So you have to be able to learn the groundwork of it all, because you could be a sales a sales like you know, and with a sport management degree, you can be a facility manager, you can be working concessions you know, with a sport management major. Heck, you can even be a ref, you know, with a sport management major. So those are a lot of things that encase sport management into it all. So. Being a ref is a hard gig, though. I wouldn't oh, want to yeah. be a ref. Me neither. Even, people, though, even here at Alfred, like, listen. like People yelling at me all the time. No, no thank For you. every call yeah. out. Nope. Dude, or like, I remember we were at the game the other day, a game. This guy, one of the best hecklers I ever saw. The <laughs> guy had the list of the opposing players' huh. names, and any time they were about to shoot a free throw, he would yell out their names mm-hmm. <laughs> and some sort of like, oh, you were going to miss that. You're not going to make it. Like, like as, as a ref, what do you do? Like, you know. You know, because that's just the crowd. That's part of the sporting event. That's part of the aura that is sports. God forbid the, they find the ref's name out. You know, that's. Oh, gosh. I'm a, imagine if they had, like, you know, instead of naming or uh, yelling out their name, you just yell out their address. See, <laughs> but people can find <laughs> Name and address. And that would be crazy. I've, I've actually seen people who define people's addresses and everything like that. And, it, like, as a ref, like, that's. Like, I remember one time, uh, like, a, two summers ago. I had to work at Gus Macker. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I had That's to work. the th- three-on-three basketball mm-hmm. tournament stuff. I had to work at that, and eventually, like, they didn't have enough refs, so they asked me to ref one of some of the games, and the parents were brutal. I'm talking, these are 16, these are, like, 9 to, like, 16-year-old kids, and their Dude, parents were going off. big in this area. They had not it, that much to do. They had it on the, yeah. the main strip of Hornell, and these parents were brutal. If you didn't make the right call, they're all up in your ear and just yelling. So. Dude, and you'll see some people go around to different Gus Macker tournaments with their squad, right? The mm-hmm. three, like, and these are grown men. Like, these are, like, actually, like, like over six foot. They can shoot. They can do all that. Like, yeah. they will go to these different tournaments and literally just try and win, you know, because they love the game. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Let's focus a little bit back more on Alfred. Mm. Yeah. So, coming here, bit of a culture shock. A little bit different in the city, mm-hmm. much slower pace. Um, you know, give us your view. Um, like I said earlier, the the fact that it was such a slow pace kind of intrigued me. You know, especially in that first year. Well, more in the second year, because um, for me the falls are very hectic with football and everything. The season going on um, in the spring, it really like helped me because I didn't have to wake up at eight a at six a.m. to get to get to Brooklyn. You know, I get to just wake up, get to class. Walk five minutes to class, come back, get homework done, go lift. You know, it became a lot easier, and and you start to learn more about yourself and how you operate. So that was one of the big things that I loved about Alfred, and the fact you get to be around people who aren't like you don't have to travel an hour and a half to go see one of your boys. You know, 
I mean, I will say, also being an Alfred State student, I think that's one of the best things about the last couple of years at Alfred is the diversity we have here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've met Puerto Ricans. I've met Domin- like people from the Dominica, uh, Dominican Dominican Republic. Republic. Yep. I met people from like who've come from Africa and moved to the states. Like, I've met what do you call it? Uh, an Egyptian, uh, mm. Yusuf. 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 Quite literally. Like I was like, uh, he saw the pyramids. I was like, that is such a cool <laughs> thing. And like I would have never met these people. And I've had conversations with him and other people about like just how diverse we can be and the fact that there's a lot of people who can just you can sit down and just have actual intelligent conversations with you know i think especially in our day and age that kind of has gotten lost you know i'm not going to get too much into that but um i know there's not a lot of people who can just really sit down and just eventually agree to disagree yeah well the phones put a big block on that right because like listen is like when you're sitting around a group of people you may not know like because you have a phone, you can kind of stay in your own little bubble. And what that does, it causes less social interaction. It causes you not to kind of have to, you know, run on your feet, you know, speak ca- as you go. It causes you to not be able to accept people, other people's opinions. Because you're only seeing, like I know on, on Instagram, your feed is just filled with the stuff you like. Yeah. You know, you're not going to see opinions on your feed most of the time that you don't, you don't agree with. Mm-hmm. You know, so people get stuck with that and they're not able to now veer off into different ideas and different opinions. You know, really trying to think with each other, because that's what's one of the coolest parts about speaking with somebody who's different from you. We all have, like, we are all an accumulation of, like, different things in our background, different experiences. And, like, when you really try and talk to someone else about what they're going through, like, it gives you a much bigger perspective. You and know? S- someone who's really big with that is um, Dennis Dueno in student engagement. Like, he really does push just getting everyone and everyone in that office as well, you know, getting a lot of people involved from a lot of different backgrounds just to put them all together and to put that out there. You know, even the CLC, you know, using so many different platforms, so many different groups and programs to get other people background out there and allow their voice to be heard. So Mm -hmm. I think it's and like that's just credit to the college, too, because, right, we have Alfred University across the street, Mm -hmm. right? You know, I don't know about their enrollment as much, but it just seems like they don't have as many people there as a couple years ago. And you can just tell, like, we're very lucky to have the kids we have here Mm -hmm. working together from all over the state. And not just, like, sometimes all over the world. Yeah, I was about to say all over the world, too. Either, like, there are a lot, like, sometimes we get kids from Florida. I know, like, other places in the South. I know some, there's some people from the West Coast who come all the way over here, you know. And I know that, at least in the sport management program, I can say that. Saying you went to Alfred State for certain jobs can, can get you some really good looks. You know, it can get you some more, you know, what's the word? Um, well, it can just, like, put your name out there a little bit more. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a technical school. Like, when you go to most colleges, usually they have these other, not fancy degrees, but it's a little bit more, um, I don't know how to say it. It's less technical. Yes. Like, you're not going to see welding jobs, people working through, like, what do you call it? Uh, car, Cody does it. The yes, yes, um, mechanical engineering, you know, stuff like that. Mechanical engineering, yeah. things with, like, trade jobs. Yeah. You're not going to find a school that can give you a, a nursing job and a mechanical engineering major at the same time. Yeah, I love the hands-onness in this college. It's great. I love, like, working with my hands a bunch, stuff like that. It's just crazy. Well, and I love seeing the the rally car, like, right downstairs in oh, yeah. the building we're in. We're in the SLC, right? So mm-hmm. right downstairs, you'll see a rally car that they work on all throughout the year, or a project car. And that's a really cool thing to see. Like, do I know anything about that? Not really, but... But you walk by it every day, and you're like, you get more and more interested every single day. You see it. So. And, you, and it's cool to see that, like, students are doing the work. Mm. And walking through the um, the set, the engineering mm-hmm. building, and walking around and see like the the drawings and stuff like that from uh, the like art major students is is cool too. And all the workshops that they have going on there, mm-hmm. or even some of the engineering rooms, like you'll see yeah. the different types of parts kids are working on, like mm-hmm. the mech, like uh, I know there's a name for it, but it's like metal, like shaving off metal to get to fine like mm-hmm. fine parts. Mm-hmm. Mm. So. If you were talking to a new Alfred student, what would be one suggestion you give them for being here at Alfred State? Find your click, I would say. You know, find what makes you you. If anything, write down a list of the your best qualities and look for people who match those qualities. Because the last thing you want to do is be around a bunch of people who don't want to succeed as much as you. And it, I've seen it, it 
tear some people down a bit. You know, not being around people who want to be as successful as them. So find that find that group. If it's a club, you know, if it's a, a little friend group, if it's a team, you know, if it's a organization on campus, find that family if you can. So, well, because right, this is like the way Alfred tries to approach. Like they they want this to be a family ish atmosphere. Like, are they saying that you know everyone's gonna be all all up in your business every day? No, but I think there's a lot of people like who genuinely care about the students. Like mm-hmm. I can't like uh, Mir was working at the terrace the whole year last year, so basically he's working in food prep, doing all this stuff. And, like, I know those lunch ladies work real hard. Mm-hmm. So. They do. You know, and especially when we have something going on, they'll go out of their way to make sure we're blessed with good food. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. All right. Now let's get into some nitty-gritty about Alfred. Uh, so what is one problem that you've seen on campus here at Alfred being a student? Um, to be honest, I think it's, and I'm, I'm going to, you know, credit this to, you know, the fact that we are kind of a younger school. Um, but I think it's, we're lacking a little school spirit. Mm. You know, I think the pioneer name could be a lot more within our own students. You know, especially, like, I can see it from the athletic lens of we could use more people at games. You know, we could use more people at games, um, more people traveling. But also, as athletics, we need to do a better job in supporting other, other organizations be interesting if we get like a bus going to some of these uh, like other events yeah that would be cool like yeah. imagine being able to like to sign up for a like my high school did it a little bit so shout out to cuba rushford high school <laughs> you know but what they would do is they'd actually have a spectator bus mm-hmm. so you pay i think it was free i think they actually like the school paid for it but say you might pay five dollars yeah. to get on the bus and go watch the event and then come back that same night with the team no that that sounds like a great idea because like, it builds it builds people like going out of their way to you know go to a game you yeah. know going out of their way to support the team then they bring it on to their families and you know cuz i know one of the biggest issues with with kind of like our attendance is we got a school right across the street that has been a good athletic program for decades you know so you're basically competing with i mean a couple of years ago they were winning their divi- like their division they went football, deep into like, the playoffs you know yeah, like they a couple were years really ago really cooking like we just don't have that type of tradition yet but that takes time you know at the same time i mean we're coming off like at the football team very fortunately like we're coming off like we just won our section like we're going to get a nice cool ring like we went to the playoffs so like it takes time to build that type of culture too it does Mm -hmm. um but like i came from a school that was was kind of deep in you know tradition and their reputation was very good in terms of like how they've been historically so coming here it was a bit of a culture shock to say as well because the student section isn't the same let's face it like, it's not, like, from high school to here, like, I would kind of agree with your, you know, it's not as, it's not as good. Yeah. Like, I want to see people going, like, very excited about the game. I want to see people heckling. I want to see excitement <laughs> about sport. And it, it, not just that football, you know, if it's a volleyball game or a, um, or a soccer game. You know, I know the soccer game against AU was pretty packed. Mm-hmm. You know, if we can get that more often, just that excitement to come out. It doesn't have to be just about coming to a football game. Just coming out and supporting your school you know i think that's gonna have to start like it's gonna have to trickle down because i think where to start would probably be with the uh, like others like other athletes mm, yeah like yeah. obviously if you're at the event playing you can't be in your own stack like section yeah mm. but like us as football players like we try to go to every basketball game we can is a try- is a good way like if you got to run a promotion just to make sure you get some more kids in the seats and then create a loyalty to that word now because I'm, I'm not gonna lie axing a a 18 to 23 year old student to wake up on a Saturday at to get to a game at 12 p.m. It's, it's not it's not easy to do. Yeah, you know it takes that takes effort to get someone to wake up and walk all the way up to Orvis. I mean to uh, the field and to watch it sit there for three hours and watch a game. But like you know, we there are other schools who can do it. You know, so follow those. Try to follow those type of ideas and maybe maybe it can help us. I feel like crowd the crowds at games can really help the players too. Yeah. Because, you know, if you got a small crowd out there, you know, you only hear a little cheer, you know, when you get a touchdown. You hear, you hear some cheering, but, you know, if you have a big section, you know, you just, you know, those big moments there, you hear this giant roar from the stadium, and you're like, yeah, you're, like, you guys get pumped up. Like walking yeah. out on a game day and you see in the crowd full, like it creates more 
school spirit for you because you know people are coming to support. Yeah. Not you specifically, but like your no, team. No, as an athlete, yeah. you're being held accountable. Those people are coming to watch you because they are believing in what you're doing. Yeah. And now it, it makes you want to perform better. Yeah, because you, you know? have, like, you got to show out. Mm -hmm. Like, you work so hard in every practice, every day, running, conditioning, doing drills. Like, and to see someone come out to support you, it's like... And good and bad, right? Because yeah. obviously, listen, if you don't perform in those situations, those They'll teams aren't going to be happy. So it's like definitely having, a performance component of this. It's like having grandma come out to the game, and you're like, I'm super hyped. My grandma's here. I want to show I want to show her how good I am. Mm -hmm. exactly. It's on your face, you know? Yeah. But well, also, I think out. one... Because I know we was talking about this in one of the classes I was taking. Um, team success, it comes and goes. You know, every school has those ups and down years. Yeah. You know, but I feel like in an order to keep attendance the same, you know, that tradition has to stay. Make people want to come to the game. Maybe, maybe not just for the game, like it I said earlier. It has to be an event. Has to make it an event and not just a football game. Make it an event for all students. Like an event, a destination, you know, a place you want to be at. Because, like, listen, if, you, if I go to a game and I don't feel a good vibe, if the crowd's not into it, I don't want to go again. Mm -hmm. Like I'll, they like, can just be like, "Hey, I, I can, I can just downer. watch this on a, I can just watch this on a live stream." Yeah, it's you know? like, why would I like? Yeah. So it definitely takes you know a student accountability. So I hope to see more of that in the future. Yeah. Too. How about you, Doug? Thoughts? Oh, uh, yeah. No other thoughts. No, no <laughs> thoughts behind my eyes right now. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I thought you brought up some good points though. Like I think that's a great, you know, I think that's a very fixable problem for everyone here. Mm -hmm. You know, anyone listening to the podcast today. I have I have a question for you. Go ahead. If you couldn't play, if you couldn't play football, what uh, sport would you play? Like, what's your second sport that you would play if you could? Honestly, it, it'd probably be a tie between either basketball and probably rugby. Rugby? Ooh, that's an interesting pick right there. Rugby. Because I kind of looked into that a little bit. Actually. When I was in like seventh grade, when I was in high middle school, we had like flag rugby, and mm. I fell in love with it. Yeah. And, you know, going into high school, like, I didn't know I wanted to play football in high school. Um, so going into I was like, yo, maybe I should try to play rugby, you know, maybe get into tackle rugby and everything. But then football came in and, you know, kind of just took over my life, yeah. um, which I'm happy about. It takes dedication. You know, but basketball, you know, you always try to get better at basketball, especially in the off season. I mean, who doesn't love hoops? Yeah. Like, we're all hooping all the time. All the time, like the whole football team. So <laughs> that those would probably be the top two. Yeah. Well, rugby is a lot, uh, a lot like football because it has that sort of physical toughness that you need to have, and you know you're running into players. You might, you know, you need that toughness, mm -hmm. and like in foot, and like in football. Yeah, dude, and some of the injuries those guys face, like yeah. they play on whatever injuries they have, and, and whatever they, surface too. Tape, tape yeah. it up. Broken you know, pinky? That's okay. You you have four more fingers on that hand. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's like, okay, you lost one, but maybe this is your advantage now. Yeah. Nah, and I was looking into that. Like, I was actually looking at a couple different cub, like clubs in rugby. Like, there's a few in Buffalo that actually practice at the Bills field. So mm -hmm. I was like, that's a really cool thing to maybe try and get into after high school. I'm not gonna lie, that or not like, high school, college. Going back <laughs> to what we were talking about earlier with the the team spirit. Like, imagine if we could do that. If we could, as a team, could have a game at the Bills Stadium. That would be so cool. You know, you would get that name out there. Of course, it would cost a lot of money. You would yeah. have to pay for a lot I would of stuff. Definitely but come though. That. <laughs> you know, you would get people to come yeah, out to the exactly. game. Well, I mean, you're not talking the greatest realm of impossibility. Like, you, it would just take it would just take like more effort to do it. Like, it like would you'd take... have to talk to like again the sports management major because that's where the relationship is. Like those professors talking to the field, mm -hmm. and then it's like figuring out a time to fill out that venue because they're not gonna they're not just gonna like it's not gonna happen overnight. No, because I know we play Buff State this year. Like that would be a and we're playing that that would be a great atmosphere to to do have yeah. a game at the Again, at the Bill Stadium against Buff State, and like it would get, honestly, it would get both teams recognition. But for us, we're now putting our name out there in partnership with the Buffalo Bills, mm -hmm. and you might get some people from Buffalo say, "Hey, that Alfred State school is pretty good." I well, mean, and we have kids from Buffalo like that come here all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not that far off. And getting yeah. their families to come too, and getting maybe the, some of their family, like yeah. Dave, it would that be, might a, be a move. It would yeah. be a big thing. We got a bunch of Bills fans on campus, I know, because uh, I hear a lot of screaming when the Bills games are yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's, I th it's, 
So I think that would drive a lot of students to be like, oh, they're pre they're uh, playing at the Bills Stadium. Oh, I'd love to go. I'd love to go see that. Exactly. Because they're supporting a they're supporting their school and they're being, being like, I got to go to the Bills Stadium to watch my school play. That's like sick. What do you think you'd have to do for something like that? Um, like, how would that all go about? Like, there's definitely multiple like levels and stages you'd have to kind of go through. You would have to pay for the venue, of course. Um, then you would have to. It would take so much money because you're paying the bills to now occupy the stadium for something that yeah, they're not it's usually like doing. Time. It's like, yeah. Um, and on top of that, it would take transportation. You have to pay transportation, but that's no different than just a regular game. That's why I said the Buffalo game, the Buff State game, because you're already traveling to Buffalo. Um, Dude, they'd probably be excited about it, too. Because technically they would be the home team. Yeah. yeah. You know? No kidding. So I think transportation is a thing. Paying for the actual space would be a big thing. And I think that would probably be the biggest two things. And then getting everyone on the same page, I feel like, because we'd have to accept it from our head coach's perspective of the football team. They'd have to accept it from their perspective. Then there'd also be a problem of, like, trying to make sure that we have a bunch of college students respecting the field. Yes. Yeah. Because yes. that's another big thing. That is the Bill Stadium. Like This is an NFL is organization. A loyal fan base. Yeah. Like, I would hate to, like, go there and see anything left, like – in worse condition. And also on top of that, you know, you could get really lucky and maybe you get a nationally televised game. You know, I know that's a long shot, but maybe you get like a ESPN to come to the game. Like, hey, D3 team playing at the Bills Stadium. You know, you never know. You said Buff State? Yeah, we play Buff State this year. So maybe, who knows, maybe that happening. Maybe, maybe you could just get a local Buffalo station to, hey, let's, let's put on this game. You know, and then you get... I mean, it definitely be talked about. That's that's not unheard of to get, like, radio stations to mm -hmm. tune in on games and be like, this is what's happening. And you wouldn't need the entire stadium. Like, you wouldn't need to occupy the the big screen. Like, technically, you wouldn't need that. Um, as long as you got a scoreboard working, that's pretty much all you need. Mm -hmm. So... Just getting the organization, like, put in. Mm hmm It's a good idea. Yeah. All right, you got anything else, Doug? I think I'm all set there. All right, so let's go to our outro. So this has been Real Talk with me and Douglas. Uh, we appreciate you guys watching. And I'm going to put up some socials, like some social media stuff to let you guys know, like our site, our YouTube video. And I want to say thank you to uh, David Harrell helping us out. He's our first guest this semester trying to like get this up and running. He's a cool guy. He's a great guy. So, All right, sounds good, guys. Appreciate Thanks. you letting me on. Course, like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget that stuff. That was cool. That was that was nice. Don't come. Don't forget to turn the notification.